let's get started. Yeah. How you guys doing today? Hooray, we're doing things. Hey, welcome to Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. Uh, we took last week off. I gotta be honest with you guys, I woke up, had a headache, didn't feel like doing anything. So mm-hmm. it was like, Luke, we're not gonna do anything this week. He's like, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I woke up late anyway and was like, cool. I can stand bet. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, as you know, as a per our usual thing, or at least what we try to do is our usual thing, we're going to start off with uh, News is Stupid. This happened in Tacoma, Washington. A um, woman named Jamie met up with some fishermen who was hooked an octopus during a fishing derby in Tacoma Narrows August 2nd. She saw an opportunity for an unusual picture. Um, I don't know. This, this has nothing to do with hentai. But it has everything to do with hentai. For those, no, it really doesn't. (laughs) Like there is no tentacle rape in this. Um, The woman, they they hooked an octopus. Yes. So, and for some reason, this woman got the idea to put the octopus on her face and pose for a picture. Okay. It bit her. Of course. As wild animals are wont to do, it like it attacked her. And, like, why would you not think that was going to happen? I think people think octopuses are, like, for, like <laughs> jellyfish without stingers. That they don't have a fucking big-ass beak that it's they like, use to eat their food. Like, like, why would you do this? Like, yeah, I don't it's understand. Just, it's just dumb. It's, uh, basically, uh, which is her last name, put the octopus on her face and pose. At first, it grabbed her with its suckers and then did something she didn't expect. Why would you not expect this? <laughs> it bit her on the face. It had barreled its beak into my chin and then let go a little bit and did it again. It was really intense pain when it went inside and it just bled, dripping blood for a long time. Yeah. No shit. They've got a big fucking beak in there. They're not... Uh, like... Basically, I said the octopus was a smaller juvenile version of a giant Pacific octopus, although a spokeswoman at the Point Defiance Aquarium said it could have been a Pacific red octopus. At this point, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Both have a powerful beak used to break and eat crabs, clams, and mussels, and their bite contains a poisonous venom to immobilize their prey. Oh, wow. I didn't know those, like, most octopuses were poison. I knew the, uh, those blue ones in Australia, because everything kills you in Australia, were, like, hyper-poisonous and little teeny cute things. She says the venom left her in incredible pain, but as owner of South South Sound Salmon Sisters, say that five times fast, she kept fishing for two Fuck, more say days. It one more time, and I don't fucking have any idea what you said. South Sound Salmon Sisters. Oh, okay. So they, they do fish. Um, she kept fishing for two more days before she finally went to the emergency room. Jesus Christ. It took her two fucking days after getting bit by an octopus on the chin and like bleeding and having venom rolling through her veins. She was I like, mean, you know, maybe I should go to the hospital. Maybe you shouldn't have picked up a fucking wild animal and put it on your goddamn I'm face. Put it on my face. <laughs> That's what I socked with. And it's alive. Like, like, oh, okay. You fucking just know it's alive. She has to be white. She's totally white. Okay. Of course she is. She's totally white, and she looks like she dates her brother. Okay. (laughs) Tacoma, Washington. I mean, where are they getting fucking... Jesus. I mean, it's on the Pacific Northwest, right? So, like, they have... It just seems too far north, but, you know, I I don't know what fucking lives anywhere. I mean, considering that, like, Anchorage, Alaska hits 70s and 80s for their highs and... In like, the summer, in so summer, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess that and makes it sense. is summer right now, so mm-hmm. those waters are warm. And I don't know where octopuses tend to stay temperature wise, so fuck, who knows? But yeah, that's, that's just like that's I'm just, gonna put this wild wow. animal on my fucking face. I, <laughs> well, I love that they she kept oh my God. she kept fishing for two more days, yeah. two full days. That's she like kept the fishing. the and I know I first saw this in Australia with Australia, but I keep seeing Florida man gets attacked by shark goes to bar. <laughs> but I swear to God, I've seen that from uh, Australia in the past, like on fucking Shark Week on Discovery Channel or something. It's just one of those things, man. Like, oh my God, do you see that the Ohio lawmaker who blamed mass shootings on trans people, gay marriage, and exception oh, of recreational God. marijuana? Like, Ohio that that's our that's our stomping grounds, guys, and that just makes me like. Just really? that fucking idiot. Why? I love that. Like, <clears throat> like. Everyone, pretty much both sides of the aisle, were just like, the fuck in the state, you? told him, you need to resign. Her. Oh, the sheriff. The sheriff told yeah, the her. Yeah, sheriff, sheriff said, sheriff said, you, you, you shouldn't you, be you in power. You should just stop. Yeah. You, 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 
You just need to not talk anymore. I do love that. And, like, it's one of those things where, like, in the age of, like, Me Too and, and trying to get, like, women to be equal with men, it has to be a woman playing some stupid fucking, like, saying the stupidest shit ever, right? I mean, if that's not equality, I don't know what it is. It's, you're absolutely <laughs> correct, man, but it's like... She was fighting for women's rights to be just as dumb as men oh my in God. power. Yeah. Um... And of course, it's a Republican. It's always a fucking Republican. I mean, there's no, there's no question. It's which like be a doesn't help the whole like, you know, which, which just makes it all worse. I guess it's it's. I I just I don't I don't get it, man. Like, she's from Middletown in Butler County. Um, Middletown, like Butler County, is very close to where we are. It's like our neighbor county. So it's like, uh, uh, why? Just fucking why? Wrote that the she wrote that the real blame um, on her personal Facebook account should be the breakdown of traditional American family and acceptance of recreational marijuana, because where is it in the Bible that God said we can't get high? The weed is obviously causing these horrible, horrible tragedies. Yeah, weed and guys dressing up as women and like people having a gender identity issues. Like, yeah, that's people totally enjoying what it is. their lives. Oh my god! Like, fuck off, man. Um, blame anything but what fucking their agenda apparently like I don't know uh, here, what some of what she wrote is the breakdown of the traditional American family thank you transgender homosexual marriage and drag queen advocates fatherlessness a subject no one discusses or believes is relevant the ignoring of violent video games the relaxing of laws against criminals open borders the acceptance of recreational marijuana just Failed school policies. Hello, parents who define who defend misbehaving students. That one I'll agree with. I'll yeah, give her because that one. she's probably fucking cut school funding. Uh, disrespect to law enforcement. Thank you, Obama. What does Obama have to do with that? Hmm. I gotta have that one get explained to me. Hatred over veterans. Thank you, professional athletes who hate our flag and national anthem. You're an idiot. Uh, the well, Dem Congress. I mean, many that's... members who are open anti-Semitic. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking? Name a member of the, the Democratic Senate who, or Congress, rather, so who are openly I, I anti-Jew. Can I can explain where that one comes from. So there's uh, the um, Muslim congresswoman that was recently elected. Um, she has criticized Israel in the past, where it is taboo in American politics to criticize oh, I know that. Israel. I know that, yeah. It's the dumbest shit in the world. We send them 12 fucking billion dollars a year, some ridiculous amount, and every year they want more. Um, fuck you. Fuck you. We need to cut that goddamn money off. Israel is a self-sustaining country at this point. Yeah. They do not need our money every fucking year to keep their economy running. Especially when we can barely keep our economy running. Exactly. All right. Uh, on top of all of the other shit, and now, and, and they hit her hard as fuck because of her comments against that. Okay, being anti-Israel or anti-their government fucking be just being like a leech on our economy has nothing to do with being anti-Semitic. That's I, I not don't understand it. I, equatable I, I, at all. Now, Israel will say it is, of course, because of course. they want the fucking money. Right. But just like a couple years ago when they insulted our um, uh, leader of the house and everything because they weren't going to give them more money. Yeah. It's just, it, it's the dumbest shit in the world. I'll tell you what. If that young woman... I think her name is Emil or something along those lines. If she so, had yeah. come out and she just said, I hate Florida because it's full of Jews, fine. <laughs> that's anti-Semitic. That's anti and and anti-state, which is pretty fucked up as well. But fuck Florida, Even right? though I agree, yeah, fuck Florida. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I get that. That's when you can say she's anti-Semitic. Yes. Because she's saying we should stop paying this really rich country who's got who's now self-sustainable – 12 billion dollars a year because they're fine we don't need to do that anymore and i mean it wasn't even that i think she criticized their handling of like palestine or something like which that. they have handled it all poorly that's they, i mean that that whole situation it, has been a cluster fucked quagmire for decades and if there's any country that knows about cluster fucked quagmires that they've created it should be the united states damn right so, um, but e either way it's just like well, that's not criticizing another country's actions is not being fucking racist to the the, the it's, it's not, race it's not it's not being she's not sort saying of... all jews are fucking murdering palestinians no this is oh god i fucking hate it but um, 
any way they can attack somebody, which is true for both sides. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just so fucking stupid. Um, the culture, which totally ignores the importance of God and the church until they elect a president. God and the church, no. Come on, dude. State office holders who have no interest whatsoever in learning about our Constitution and the Second Amendment. I think you're someone who is a state office holder who has no interest whatsoever in learning. <laughs> and snowflakes who can't that. accept a duly elected president. How does that cause a mass shooter who left a... If anything, your uh, president is causing the mass shooter. But, you know, we're not going to get too political on here. It's just, this is just another one of those really dumbass news of the stupid things that popped up. It's like, wow. I just, I don't know. <clears throat> I. It's, again, it's the same thing where the fucking, like, the, it might have been a preacher or somebody blamed hurricanes on gay people. Yeah. In, uh... And that, wasn't that also, wasn't that guy also somebody who got his house destroyed in a hurricane, like, yes. two years later or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, that's, Which is great. I, like, I'm looking at this chick, and I'm not all for, like, like, we just do petty personal attacks on here, because it's funny. Um, I'm looking at yeah. her picture right now. Other people can be above that. We don't need to be. No, we don't need to We're be. We're just two assholes. We're, we're just two assholes. We get together and talk about shit. Sometimes there's a third asshole involved. <laughs> Look it's at fine. this dude. <laughs> she looks like... She looks like somebody's mom who's desperately trying to hold on to their youth. <laughs> She's like... She looks like somebody... I, I saw her picture earlier. She looks like a mom who knows her whole family doesn't give a shit about her agendas anymore. Mm -hmm. Her kids are too old to be fucking... Like, uh, no, mom. I'm not, I, I'm not gonna fucking read my Bible every day and you know continue with this fucking imaginary friend bullshit and she has no idea how to keep control of her family and keep like absolute control of everything anymore and she's breaking fuck down breaking the fuck down she's, yes she looks like a typical i want to speak to your manager but except she does not have the, the she doesn't have guys. the swoosh she's yeah. like the classic yeah, I she's the classic to your manager karen. yeah she's old school karen old scare uh, she's fucking she's a boomer she's a boomer yeah, is I I I for a long time I hate millennial jokes. I thought those were all dumb, but sometimes funny. Yeah, don't get me wrong. When a joke is funny, a joke is funny. Right. But now the boomer jokes. At first, I was like, "Come on, it's not all." And then now I'm at the point now where I'm like, "Yeah, no, fu it's fucking boomers." <laughs> He's fucking. <laughs> Anytime you hear this shit, it's like uh, boomer. Ah, yep. Oh yeah, you know it is. <laughs> she looks like she's 49, still trying to be 38. Like. That, that's what yeah. she makes me think. When I see her face, that's what comes. That's what comes to mind. Everyone has to conform to my version of reality. Yep. God, I hate that. That is definitely. That's definitely it. But it's just sad, right? Like you, like they call us the snowflakes, but they're the ones up in arms because we're saying happy holidays oh my God. instead of Merry Christmas. You mentioned, yeah, happy holidays. You mentioned, hey, maybe we should. Uh, you know, have stronger background checks. Just maybe not sell a gun to somebody who's on the federal watch list. No, bear my arms. But I'm not. I'm not saying we're going to take your guns. No, I own guns. I yeah, exactly. I have two rifles. I like firing that would, things at the range. It's yeah, fun. I, I have two guns that would consider be considered assault weapons. Yeah, in like that definition, I don't <clears throat> want to give them up. Um, but I'm 100% for stricter background checks. Like, oh, hey, is this person like? fucking dropped out of school and have a li like comments from teachers and principal or um like uh their counselors and things that say this kid's fucked up or this kid has some deep rooted problems yeah maybe that should fucking pop up and say this kid's trying to buy a fucking ar-15 and a hundred round drum magazine maybe don't sell it to him just maybe it's and yet yeah, don't get me wrong i don't believe you should use the mental uh god we are getting fucking political but the mental we've talked about mental health problems in the country before i mean and that's important. not that's not the main issue but yeah that's still part of the issue it's just i don't know it doesn't matter no it doesn't because nothing's going to get fixed it's just going to be a lot of angry voices uh it, it takes voters have any merit no They've, they're like, attacking video games, like you said before. It's like fucking Jack Thompson all over again. 
I swear to God, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to pop out and have his time in the sunlight again. And like Jack Thompson from the grave, as you hear like the fucking uh, it, uh, like WWE intro music style, he pops <laughs> out on Fox <laughs> News again. Yeah. I don't know why that specific one, but it's like, fuck it. John Cena. I think it's, yeah, that's John Cena. In my head, I was like hearing the glass breaking from um, um, uh, Stone Cold. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Stone Cold. <laughs> I do. I don't fucking know anymore, man. I Jack just, fucking oh. Tops. Oh, my God. And that is when Adam Sess will, Sessler will rise from whatever he's doing <laughs> to come and defend video games once again. <laughs> Like video games cause violence. No, I'm I'm like listen as somebody. I mean, we put that to bed a long time ago. Like no, in, video <laughs> games do not cause violence. Um, there lag was, cause violence. I wish I could remember who it was because it should it would be even more news of the stupid than any news of the stupid we've had. Somebody said that look at Japan, they don't have violent video games and they don't have violence like this. Yeah, which immediately. There's so much wrong with that sentence. <laughs> um, or that they control violent video games. It's like, do you not know what video like Japan's known for? Video games. Maybe not specifically um like I just but violent video games, yeah, sure, 100 percent they have them. But you know what they did? They banned guns a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, Australia. They have violent video games. Yeah. Guess what they don't have? Violence. They don't have guns. No, they because don't have guns. Because they did the same fucking thing. They banned them a long time ago. Yeah. With the exceptions of some small-time hunting rifles and shotguns for defending your property because you do have things that might try to kill Dingos. you. Dingoes. And it takes... You have to go through background extensive, checks and things. Extensive. Yeah, it's, it's not... You don't walk into a gun store. But, and I'm... Again, I would never... I'm not someone who says we need to take guns away from everybody because they're not wrong when they say guns are a big part of American culture. And there would be a massive amount of backlash for that. Yes. But I think closing gun show uh, loopholes where you can just walk into a gun show and buy a gun with the most minimum background check. And in some states, you just walk into a gun show and buy a gun. Um, and the fact that you can buy a gun at a gun show, be, you know, you do a background check, be clean, walk out and sell it to somebody else with no checks there whatsoever. I think that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's let's let's ban, blame video games again. I mean, it's all those goddamn violent video games' faults. I Manson. Love, I love all the memes that have popped up around that. Yeah, like where because, someone like like it, 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 and so far all I've mostly of what I've seen have been the variations on the woman screaming at the confused cat. Yes, um, where it's like. Vi video games cause violence and then like it's the cat sitting there <laughs> me and building like, my minecraft house yeah, it's, or like, it's like me managing my city me uh, building my minecraft house me uh, helping hudson rebuild Terrytown for breath of the wild players yes. uh like me sitting there doing random like cashy like there was one for vr where the cat had the vr headset on me playing cashier simulator yeah like, <laughs> like, i know one was like fucking me upping my smithing in skyrim like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's one with just a train from train simulator and he's like me driving from fucking london to wherever fuck town it's like <laughs> Like, yes, but video games are what does it. It's they're not, obvious. It's they're not the, the fact the that on all of our TV shows, we glorify violence. Uh, it's not that in all of our movies, we glorify violence. It's not the fact that guns are absurdly easy to obtain. And it's not that we've cut funding to so many programs for mental health and school and education. Yeah. And stuff. It has nothing to do with any of that. No, it's it's the video games. It's like really and we live in a time when extremism has kind of become the norm uh where it's been almost excused for that uh, the length of time it took for the election to happen yep and stuff that it just that it you didn't see it at all there was no fucking white supremacist movements that were like and I mean, I know they were there, but nothing to the point where they felt like they can be out and promoting. But now? I just don't get it, man. I God. just... Uh, 
She anyway, went retarded. Let's 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 move on. <laughs> <clears throat> Although before we do, I want to say one thing. Yeah. Um. Somebody put a dick in Tommy Tommy Laren's mouth, please. <laughs> Just, just shut her up. Tommy Laren, she's... I honestly... She's, part of me is like, no, let that fucking bitch talk. Because she spouts just, like, vomits the dumbest shit. It's like why I'm like, let let Donald Trump tweet. He just... It just... The, the fucking... I wish I can remember. It's either a Bible verse or a quote or something where it's like the loudest voices usually show their, show their stupidity or something like that. And just... it's It's clear as day. It's like... It's right there. And it just continues more and more and more. I mean, she exists just so that a pretty face can reinforce this incels and everyone's beliefs that you know. on Fox News. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. All, that's all she exists for. Um, they, so someone, please, just put a dick in her mouth. They continue to lower. That's the what bar. she wants, right? George Carlin quote: "Just put a dick in her mouth." <laughs> and he said that thirty years ago. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So let's let's just move on uh, because. I'm getting one one positive thing I will say on this though. Yeah. Um. If anybody silver lining. Yeah. If anybody gets the chance, and I know I talk about it quite a few times on this podcast, uh, Joe Rogan interviewed, um, <laughs> Bernie Sanders, oh. and one big thing that they hit on is that in these presidential elections, you don't actually hear what the person, the candidate, is saying anymore. You don't hear any of their policies to like fully everything is cut into 15 second little clips that they talk about in these debates it's fucking useless the debates are fucking useless anybody who's making their decision on president based on the debates you're fucking wrong because there's no information given no no it's all sound there's bites. 15 second sound bites and and one person fucking stutters oh they were doing bad in the debate this week they didn't fucking no it's a fucking useless waste of time Listen to go like you it would have to listen to one of their rallies, one of those things. But in this, Joe Rogan sits there and goes fucking list like goes down. What? OK, so you have always talked about this, like uh, you want to reform education. How are you going to pay for it? And Bernie Sanders has the time to each and then it's an hour long, has the time to go every topic, tell what the problem is, how he's, you know, what his plan is. I thought it was interesting as fuck whether you support Bernie Sanders or not. I think this is one of the I think this is how presidential candidates need to be need to be given the like get their stuff out there. You'll never have a TV interview that's this long. No. You'll never have anything in the debates that this useful useful. And even when they're doing their rallies, at the rallies they're they're mostly there for entertainment purposes. They're not they're they're there to get their message out. Yeah. But it's it's like they're just trying to get the crowd is it what it seems like this was a breakdown of all of his policies and i know the same thing they did with andrew yang i think is the other guy's name um months ago even i i don't even know if the guy had announced he was running for pre no he did announce he was running for president uh that same thing gave him an hour he you know talked about things and even joe rogan says one of the things that he's got a different opinion on is andrew yang's the guy who's all for a base level income uh universal income which is like that's that's so far left it's it's almost like marxist yeah but it's joe rogan's like that he's it, it's he's got it worked out it's doesn't it's not something that comes off a, like a craziest communist ideal pipe dream and it's i don't know, i i just think that's the way i wish more candidates could do a podcast could do that sort of interview yeah. than these stupid fucking news like oh hey here you go you got 15 seconds go or you got 30 seconds on a fucking Fox News CNBC CNN news cycle right just fucking useless uh, and this is why I don't watch TV exactly you know like I just can't anymore dude yeah but yeah anybody interested in that and I and any like I said if you don't like him, don't even. If you're even a Republican, I'd love to see Republican pay candidates do something like this, where they get to just answer questions. Yeah, and answer. I mean, that's why I like it when Bill Maher brings like people on his show and they just sit there and shoot the shit for 15, it's, 20 minutes. It's pretty similar. I yeah. do kind of like that. 
um, when he sits down and does it in his interview. It's just, I like that <laughs> this. Bill Maher's going for the joke, though. Yeah. Even on those direct interviews, he the sure one-on-one is. interviews. But, like, sometimes it's still that good it's, exposure. They still sit there yeah. and they get to explain their sides of things. Well, like I said, uh, one thing that surprised the hell out of me was during the 2016 election, he had on the um, the, the guy who was running from Ohio. Yeah. The John really, Casey. really, yeah, the really, really staunch Christian guy. Yeah. And I was surprised that after hearing that interview, I was like, I, I like this guy. Like, he's, I, if I was going to vote Republican, that's who I would vote for. Yeah. Even though there's a lot of things I don't agree with him on. It's just he was way more agreeable on most things than anybody else on that fucking stage. Oh, there are so many. Never mind. Let's yes, fine. but you couldn't. Most of those other candidates, you couldn't. It, it, you would see the flaws in them both as people and in the bullshit that they spout yeah. if you force them to sit down for an hour and ask a question like this is an issue with healthcare what are you going to do what's your plan to fix it and have them you know only able to give you do. and yeah only able to give you like uh, we're going to uh, we'll fix it okay how oh we're going to tell them we're going to do this or we're just we'll fix it we're going to negotiate we'll come up with a deal Right. But with who, how, and what? Right. I mean, just... Uh, yeah. It's... I, I would love to see... I would love to see more of that. All right. Well... Oh, that was cool. Let's move on to the main topic of today, which is what? Fire Emblem? I don't know. Like one of the big topics. I know Fire Emblem topics. came out uh, the week before. Yeah, it uh, came, out the, 20, came out on the 26th. Uh -huh. and, and you've played the absolute shit out of it. I have. No, I... It, it took me really like... Have. A week before I even booted it up, and then I've only played it for like three or four hours. Um, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, it it it, de it literally came out two weeks ago to the day of this recording. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I have played the absolute shit on out of it. Um, I'm actually on my third playthrough, mm -hmm. my second new game plus, and which um, is new to Fire Emblem. New, yeah, um, maybe I don't know. I don't know. There might have been another Fire Emblem game I never played because there are at least two on 3DS that I never really did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it, I like the New Game Plus idea. Mm -hmm. but I've played through um, the game two and a half times now, I'd say. I'm, I'm, I'm about... I'm getting to the halfway point of the halfway point. So maybe not that far, but... Um, which means I've played through two separate stories. One's called Silver and Snow and one's called Crimson Flower. Mm -hmm. something like that I don't know and um, like the game is the game is core Fire Emblem but so much better it's so much different too it, it is it's it's like we were talking about it last night on the way back to my house from D&D &D, uh, how you said it was like a visual novel or a high school drama yeah it, it is and that is not in a bad way at all no it it surprised me it's so much because it's one thing with Fire Emblem games is you don't get to experience barely even the, the, the hint of the outside of the battles. Yeah. Because the, most of those games take place over years. Yeah. And it's a giant war and blah, blah, blah. This game, you actually are dealing with the in between the downtime. Yeah. Because no, you're a teacher I, teaching your units. And like <laughs> you, you talk to them and like the game, is, like the game happens in chapters, right? Yeah, and every chapter is a month. That's a month long. Mm -hmm. So you start in like April or whatever, and every every month goes by, and there's a new chapter. So like everything's, I don't want to say happening in real time because it's not. That's that's an utterly ridiculous yeah. idea. But there are things that happen in those time frames. You know, like you have interactions with your students, you have interactions with the other teacher, the other staff at the faculty of the. You're at a, you, you, you're it's a military a, academy. Oh. Uh, for the church, yes. By the way, <laughs> that's the thing that's like like church and religion and and things like that are a very central core to this, mm -hmm. um, and they they handle it really well in the story. I, yeah, so far I've like I said I enjoy the hell out of it. <clears throat> the the breakdown of the three kingdoms, the three main factions, and then the church is kind of like imagine if um, the countries around the Vatican if the Vatican had just the most like prestigious military academy so those countries would send their best and brightest there to be trained right and all these countries are a part of the religion because it's the Roman Catholic Church and you just are uh, pretty much yeah. up until you're not and then <laughs> wars break out <laughs> yeah 
Um, and that that is like without spoiling too much that is kind of what happens in the game right like because like i said i've completed it luke's barely played it yeah um and i've gone through two separate storylines and uh like like there's so much to like about the game Mm. like you start off you're a you're the son of a mercenary so you're a mercenary yourself you meet the three main characters, the three main house characters. You save them from some bandits, blah, blah, blah. So typical, like, anime protagonist type shit. One thing that was weird <laughs> to me, even just playing the beginning for the first time, and I'm sure there's probably going to be some twists. Like, I very, like, simply because your character looks literally, like, the farthest away from possible looking like the character that's your father or in one of the dialogue options you can say that he's not your father that he's just raised you yeah so i guess it's kind of ambiguous um is that you look nothing like him not close at all he's like got red hair and everything he looks almost like a scottish dude and the main character which you you can only choose gender you can't choose the way they look which i was a little disappointed in but it's no big deal. There's a story reason for it. So exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty early <laughs> on. I was like, oh, there's no fucking way that this dude is. It's just it was weird. The the dynamic between them was uh it, it was a little it, it feels a little off at the beginning. Yeah. Um. Not that because he's he doesn't he doesn't talk to you like a kid. He talks to you like um someone he's he's trained as like another soldier of his, which he basically has. Yeah. Like like all right. He is your father. Oh, okay. Like, he is by less father. So, it's not like that's a... But that's that's revealed later in the story. So, yeah. minor spoilers. Oh, fuck. I, I, there's there's going to be things I'm going to talk about where I can't help but spoil it. But I'm not spoiling any big plot points. So, don't worry. Um, but, yeah. I mean, he is... Yeah. He is by less father. Which... You know, for the longest time. Is that what the character's name is? By less, Not Blythe. I thought it was Blythe for the longest time. Did right? they say it? No, they don't say it, but the stock character's name, if you don't change it, it's... Oh, Blythe. that's... Okay, yeah, I thought it was the dumbest looking name ever, so I changed it to something else. And I yeah, yeah, no, I don't even remember what I changed it to at doesn't this point. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> but yeah, no, his name is Byleth. It's not like a uh, Zelda game where they constantly call you by your name. <laughs> yeah, no, where... In like, the like, text... in Breath, like in Breath of the Wild, it's like Link. No, yeah. they don't. They call you Professor. That's how they get around that. Yeah. You're, um, you're, you're just Professor to everybody. Big thing about the story and why it's <clears> so fun... <throat> Even doing the the, the the run around the school anime style stuff, which I actually enjoy. Yeah, it's like fun. There's, there's like like especially when you get to your, your uh, professor level up enough and you can do tons of activities. Full voice acting, yes, was everything. so important and makes a big difference in that. Where most of this stuff, I even went and I was playing a um, RPG on my PC, um, yeah, earlier, and just after five minutes was just slamming the skip key. Yeah. Because I did not fucking care anymore. When I'm playing Fire Emblem, I have it set to automatically go forward and I just sit there. Yeah. And listen to the dialogue. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's no, like, like, it's, it's. The first time I've gone through all of this, that's exactly how I've sat there. Like, I've just, like, I'm engrossed in the story. Yeah. I want to hear the characters speak. And even the stupid characters, the ones I don't like, the yeah. ones that are just. You want to hear what they're going to say. Like, hey, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm always hungry. When's the food open? It's like, <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm completely there with you. Like, even though I'm playing it through a second, a third time now, and I've gone through both paths of the story, uh, like I said, I've gone through two of the four yeah. paths, um, I still will sit there sometimes, even though I've, I've seen and heard and read all this, I'll still sit there and just let it play. Yeah. And, like, listen and watch, and, like, I'm sitting there, i got my vape in my hand, I'm like, what's going to happen next? <laughs> even though I fucking know what's going to happen next, because I've already played through this. And, um, like, I've played through Edelgard's storyline. She's, mm-hmm. I, I've chosen her house. I chose her house the first time around just because it was default. I'm like, fuck it, why not? Let's see what mm-hmm. happens. And then I chose her house the second time around because I heard there was an alternate path. Like, I read, like, wait a minute, you can, you can, you can join, oh, you can do this? And that, I, I can't speak anymore because it reveals a major plot line. Yeah. Um, but it's like, oh, yes, I want to do that. I want to see where that goes. Well, that makes I want to know is that something that happens in each of the different the three paths? I I, I kind of hope so. I don't know um, yeah. because there, is, there are only four paths. Like that's oh, confirmed. four total four total like, paths. Yeah, well, where, I wonder if you side you know like like I um, wonder if you just choose you have the same choice, but it doesn't change the story. 
You know what I mean? If you I, I don't know. I can tell you that when I was going through with the choices that I made mm -hmm. to play the alternate path, it comes up with a black screen and a warning saying, this will alter the story drastically. Oh, wow. Do you want to do this? I'm like, yes. Nice. Um, I like it when you get those warnings. <laughs> and it does it twice for Edelgard. Uh. Like, there's... Because there's two major choices. And, like... The first one that leads to you being able to make the second one is easily missable. Yeah. It's very easily missable because there's a certain point, a certain chapter where if you don't talk to her, it just doesn't happen. It's one of and, the... And I made that mistake. Not really a mistake but because I, I didn't know, but I did that the first time around and I ended up you know, doing the doing one path and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This is how this is supposed to go. And then when I read, like, wait a minute, you can do this instead? How do I do this? And then I found out how you do it. Was it a case of, because the way the game breaks down is every every week you have a day. Uh, I you think have it's a day on, off, yeah. Yeah, you have a day off where you can choose to run around, talk to your people. You can choose to have a seminar with the other teachers to boost yeah. your skills. You can choose to go to battle. and Or you can battles. choose to rest, which is nobody picks. Um, Until later, I guess, later, it becomes yeah. useful. They're, 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 I mean, it's always going to be useful. Like, uh, there's always you raise your allies' motivation. Yeah. And they learn their skills faster during yeah. the week. Um, but, but was it a case of you chose to like battle on the wrong week? No, it or was, it is it's, it's, it's like you have to actively you just talk to miss her. it. Okay. Just talk to her. Yeah, that's, I, that's it's very it's very I'm... easily missed. It's very okay. very easily missed because if you're running around the monastery and you just don't think about it, yeah, like you're not going to talk to every single character all the time. I've right? I've made it a habit in the three or four weeks I've done that. Yeah, I've literally been like okay every character and I go and I talk to every single character because right. my OCD will not let me not talk to those characters and then I started finding the stupid fucking lost items and I'm like shit now I have to go back around and talk to every character again to see if this is their fucking stuffed bear or glove or <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, because then I couldn't remember where anyone, which there is a way that you could just see where they are, which mm -hmm. I didn't realize until after I ran around the whole map three goddamn times. But yeah, it's just one of those things where like, if you're yeah. not paying attention, yeah, you can, you can miss it. Like during the month, the chapter in particular, if you choose to battle the entire month, you will miss it. Oh, okay. So yeah, if which you, I won't do If that, you I'd rest just... instead of doing a thing, you, you can miss it. Yeah. If you choose to do seminars the whole month, you can miss it. Like, it's just one of those things where it's it's something you can easily miss. This is one of those games where I immediately, after I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to go find the IGN or whoever article that says, you know, the 27 things I wish I knew before I played Fire Emblem. Right. There's, there's a lot in a lot of games, but this is one of those games where I'm like, I'm, I need that list. Yeah. And one of the things, as they said, is like, make sure you are not skipping um, talking never, to characters. Yeah, Don't, never ne skip Make sure you do those. Never skip a week. Like you can yeah. rest, but never skip a week. Yeah, make um, sure you do that at least once a month or something like that. That's what I do because, because you like, get they only change They only change once a month anyway. That's what I... I was yeah. hoping it was something like that where it didn't break down. Like, if one week I chose battle on the wrong week, I'm fucked. No, no. But it's it, that's month. It's, what it's I was... It's a month by yeah. month basis. Okay. That much I can definitely tell you. Um... Because, like, I've done that. Like, I've done it where I've, I've chosen to explore every single week when I'm trying to build, like, rapport with a character. Because mm -hmm. you can invite them to tea. You can invite them to eat with yeah. you. You can invite the them to the different activities. You. you can and do the choir singing. Yeah, you can do choir <laughs> singing, which is useful if you're trying to build, like, a bunch of white mages or something. Yeah. Um, like, stuff like that. So you can sit there and you can you can do that. You can build the bonds with characters. And that's, that's when you... That's, that and battle are like the two big ways to do it. Yeah. You know, like buy them gifts, buy return lost items to them, invite them to eat meals, invite them to tea and make the right choices, blah, blah, blah. I haven't gotten the tea option yet. Yeah, it comes down the line. It's, yeah. Uh, like, it's not even really a spoiler. Oh, no, I'm not worried about spoiler. Yeah. I know there's going to be more activities. And oh, things. yeah, absolutely. Actually, I think the next. No, it's not the next month. I still just have fishing and i don't know i i just it's very it's it's interesting it's cool the way they've done the the that side of the game mm -hmm. where you do activities you like fishing is one thing that was suggested to do because it doesn't take an activity point it does not and you can you, you just can catch do all it. sorts of stuff and, yeah, yeah you catch tons of stuff catch better fish and it's easy it's just a timing yep thing although i can tell you that later on um as your professor level increases because mm -hmm. what they do is they give you like like there's tons of things a level right yeah. there's 
Oh, I mean, there's skills to level. Oh my god, there's, the there's amount classes yeah. to level. There's characters to level, and then you, as a professor, get to what's called a professor level. Yeah. Um, the higher the professor level is, the more money you get at the beginning of every month. The more activity points you get, the more you know whatever. The more lessons you can teach, in the more lessons the, you can or teach. the one-on-one -on -one lessons or whatever yeah, they call um, it. Yeah. So uh, it, it benefits you greatly to do a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, and fishing is one of those things that can increase your professor level. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that you can do for free and just do that with. Yeah. Planning planting is a really good thing for you to do too. Yeah. Every chance you get, like, like if you're doing the way I'm doing it on my playthrough, where I battle as often as possible, which <laughs> is kind of funny, because like, as you go through every other, everyone's house is level as you go, yeah. right? And the first time I played through, like we were woefully under leveled for a lot of the things we had to do. Mm -hmm. But so instead of me just overpowering everything, I had to actually think, think strategically and, and try different things. Yeah. Um, this time around, because my professor level is so high for one, because it's maxed out now. Yeah, you can spend a lot more time upgrading um, your units. And two, I've recruited units from other houses, so they have less units now to do things. <laughs> ah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, um, they would have less. So if you get into a battle with them, it's like, hey, we're going to defeat you, and it's the house leader and like one person. Which, by the way, you can do that. You, you could, can recruit every single character from every other say, single house can, except the house leader and their servant. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I didn't want them recruit, anyway. You Fuck can them. even recruit their professors. Yeah, yeah, I like, didn't that's notice the thing that. that kills me. It's like, oh my god. But um, I did that because there's a chapter, and they talk about it in the story, so it's not yeah. really a spoiler. You, you see it coming like two or three months in advance. Where there is something called the Battle of the Eagle and the Lion. Yeah, it's the, the War big, of the Eagle and the Lion. It's, it's their, their big, big event. Their big one of their big, one of their big events. Yeah, and um, like it's it's basically all three houses against each other. It's a free for all. Yeah, and uh, I recruited one unit from each house. I was <laughs> sitting there like, <laughs> "Fuck you guys." Nice. And I used the unit that I recruited, recruited from Claude's house to kill Claude. Like, fuck it, why not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting there hoping that maybe there would be a dialogue. Yeah. And there wasn't. I was a little bit disappointed. Oh. But like, you know, like, oh, you defected from me. Yeah, now I'm going to kick your ass. Like Exactly. Something uh, like, I'm sorry. Stab. <laughs> but no, there wasn't. And uh, the other one, I, I used Edelgard to defeat um, Dimitri because there is dialogue between those three. Like, there's always going to be dialogue yeah. between the three and the professor. So, like, if you use the professor to defeat one of them, there's going to be, like, a little monologue. <laughs> that just is so shitty. Use the professor to defeat the house leader. <laughs> I mean, it's completely unfair, too. And it, But it was yeah. funny, because this time around, like, like all the characters are between 13 and 15. And I think the first time I did this, my highest level character was, like, 17. And then everybody else was around 12 or 11 some of them were still in the single digits. I'm like, oh, fuck, what am I yeah. going to do? And then this time around, I get to this, like, my highest level character is, like, 26. My lowest level character is, like, 21. Their highest level characters are the house leaders at 15. I'm like, this is going to be this fucking gonna easy. This be a fucking massacre. And That's it was. Great. It was a complete massacre. I just, I wiped everything <laughs> out. And I think, like, I had to heal maybe three characters the entire time. Yeah. Because they just, like, they just fucking steamrolled everybody. They've done a lot in this game where it's um, it's not necessarily easier than the other five. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not super far along. Right. Um, they they tell you pretty much who the enemy's going to attack when you're doing it, but it doesn't always plan it pay it. No, it out doesn't. That way. And there's actually an in canon reason for that too, but I can't really reveal it because okay. it's a little bit spoiler. It, I, yeah, you, you, I get where it's probably going to come from. Right. Um, there's time, there's timey-wimey shit that happens. There's timey-wimey shit that happens, yes. Um, but it's, uh, it's interesting. It feels like the battles, it feels like there's less health. And maybe I'm, because it's the beginning of the game and it's like that with every Fire Emblem. It's been a long time since I played Fire Emblem, but I feel like every hit counts. Like, I yes. have to be very yeah, careful um, with even even the... Because there's no... Every unit starts out as either a noble or a, um, a, a commoner, commoner, and it's the same. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's a fucking swordsman or nobody's a soldier. Nobody's got that bo like those bonuses <laughs> yeah. of armor and stuff. They're all pretty... It's all character dependent on what their armor and everything is. And it feels like sometimes it's... It, it, one hit can 
fuck everything up, even with leveled characters. Yes, you're not wrong. I mean, yeah. I, I can experience that now, because even with my characters being five to seven levels above theirs, there were still a few incidents during the, the war between the eagle and the lion where I'm like, oh shit, that character might yeah. die. And then I press, I just pressed the plus button, like, fuck it, let's see what happens. And then they were still there, and I'm like, Whew. Yeah, yeah, you kind of do that, oof. Um, I noticed that you can't, one big thing with what I always did in the older Fire Emblem games is I would constantly send a unit out, have them do one thing, like, okay, now I need to get you the fuck out of here, and then you pick them up with another unit. Can't do that. You can't here. do that no more. Nope. You can't cheese that shit. You can't do that anymore, even with units like... Uh, the cavalry and like stuff. Like the cavalry and the, and the yeah the flyers, the Pegasus yeah. knights, and the and the Wyvern knights. You can't do it anymore. I was like, I can't... I, I, uh, like, even the first battle where I noticed that's not an option with two characters next to each other, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of, like, stuff like that they did away with... Um, yeah. One thing I loved that they did away with was the pop, paper, rock, scissors of the weapon affinities, where, like, a sword doesn't beat an axe, an axe doesn't beat a yeah. lance, and a lance doesn't beat a sword. I, I like that they did away with that. Mm -hmm. Because, like, on the one hand, it's like, oh, that's that's kind of cool, that's kind of neat. That, that adds, it gives an extra, you... adds an extra element of strategy to yeah. those games. But then when they sat there and I read their reasoning for doing that, which their reasoning for doing that was... It doesn't make any sense for a novice axe user to go up against an experienced lance user and win. Yeah. Right? Like, it, like if you're a master of the lance, some idiot from the village down the road picking up an axe and swinging it at you isn't going to win. And it never made sense to me that a person with a axe would have an advantage over someone who has reach in the first place. Right, yeah. Like, if you sit there, you got it a six-foot spear an arbitrary, in your hand. Yeah. Like you're, it doesn't like, and that dude's got like a fucking hand axe. Yeah. He's not getting to you, no. you know. Like, it's it's bad for him no matter what. Even if it's two novices, or it's yeah, good. like like he's gonna get even hurt. an experienced fighter with an axe is going to think twice of got going some with somebody who picks up a spear for the first time. Yeah, they're not gonna you know rush at them or or no be stupid gonna... because even someone who knows how to fight is thinking that's a pointy stick and he's got. He can keep He's me got away at least three feet away. Yeah, yeah three feet on, on me because, uh, like, come on, why would you, why? I think it was Alexander the Great who's, like, his main battle tactic was, oh, so everyone else is using uh, spears that are six feet long? Make ours nine. Yeah. And that made all the difference in the fucking world. I could have the wrong person, but I think it was Alexander who did that. It sounds like something he would it's do. It's just, make our spears longer. And they fucking, oh my god, we're killing everyone. <laughs> 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 on top of being a tactical genius or whatever yeah like but yeah so it's like okay that makes yeah. sense i didn't that, even notice by the way yeah first like three or four battles i did yeah i instinctively was oh this guy has a spear in his hand i'm rushing the rush that's the soldier with the sword with his lance you know oh that, okay i'm switching to my axe because i did notice the main character could use multiple weapons yeah and then it didn't fucking and finally it clicked i was like oh Anybody can train it. Oh, anybody can use what the fuck? Yep. And I actually started looking and I was like, oh, it just depends on uh, what you end up advancing in makes it more likely you'll pass the test to turn into the next class. Which, by the way, I enjoy that, too. Like, there is no just automatic progression, progression yeah. right? You don't like, just pop a seal and boom. Yeah, like like you just don't go from a Miramadon to a sword master because you have a seal. Yeah. Right? Like, you actually have to develop the seal skill. level 10 or something. Yeah. Like you actually have to develop the skill in addition to that, mm -hmm. which I think was a thing they started implementing in f other Fire Emblem games. Uh, like now that I think about it, that might have been an Awakening because I know that in Awakening they had like obviously they had those like all the Fire Emblem. I'm pretty sure they yeah. had those kind of skill progressions, which determined what kind of weapon you could use. And I think later on, I think maybe it was in Awakening, maybe it was in the next one, Conquest or whatever, where they implemented it where you had to do that. But in this game, it's absolutely yeah. mandatory if you want to be able to pass it with a good, like a reasonable chance. I think you're, I think you're right about Awakening, because, but I mean, even in that game though, it was, it was like if you had a class who's a Myrmidon, your swords, your sword use is going to be at that level, pretty much yeah. no matter what. 
Right. It's not it's not a question. Now it's like you have the choice of these three novice classes. Okay, I need to if you want to be the soldier one, you have to have swords, bows, and axes. Yeah. To a certain level. Yeah. Uh if you want to be the swordsman, you have just the swords and uh, one of the other things, like yeah. leadership or something like that. Yeah. And I was looking and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. Of course, it is biting me in the ass now where my class leader is uh, – I chose the um, – You chose Claude. You chose uh, Claude, uh, the yellow yeah. deer. The yellow deer because I like that he's like the – the. Um, uh, ch- ch- traders, you know, not traders, but like uh, Merchant's Guild. He's a Yankee is traders. Kingdom. He's the Yankee. No. But they're like – he's like the Merchant's Guild. He's kind of an interesting character and – I hated the name of that one chick's country, and yeah, the other guy is you. a fucking asshole. Yeah. So um, Dimitri's all right. He seems like an asshole. His his guard is an asshole. So I was like, his guard is just uh, his his guard is just aloof. His guard is just asocial. Well, he's an asshole. Like if you go talk to him, he's like, don't fucking talk to me or come around here. Or like it's more like don't talk to me because the rumors will be spread around about you. Like he literally said that, that first. He okay, maybe at one point that. he said that. Yeah. But he was a dick the last time I talked to him. So either way, I didn't like that guy. <laughs> but that was my my choice in house was like, well, also this house has the most uh, female characters in it. Yeah. No, and I, I was you. like, and I just I like the characters more when I talk to them. Yeah. Most of the there's a lot of that. Like I I enjoy the characters, even characters I thought I would dislike. Yeah. But um, at first I was like, those houses suck. This yeah. house has fun people. <laughs> so. I chose this house and then um so with uh uh the claude i'm like okay archer all the way like i've been he's been using bows and shit and i just realized when i was looking at characters vance because he hit five he's maxed out his um Whatever. he's got his level or his class uh bonus it's not like in other fire emblem games where if you really wanted to like min max you leveled your character to 20 and then advanced yeah the, now you get the class bonus early on yeah so i'm like oh cool i'll you know, be thinking about advancing him and i looked there's no archery in novice class <laughs> it's swords axes or swords axes and bows yeah um, or lances or whatever you've got you got the for the for the starting <laughs> things you've got uh, a myrmidon fighter monk and uh fucking soldier i think so, I, I thought there were only three it, it's no, three there's four. four there's okay. four no there's like there's the one unique class yeah there's four novice there's like uh seven intermediate uh eight advanced yeah. and like uh then, then there's the master mark, classes yeah. there's ma- they're master Which classes. Right now, i'm gonna yeah. just tell you straight up they're I, master well, classes yeah. because it's fire emblem and we all know that master seals mm-hmm. exist so, so let's just be honest here so That's i'm like spoiler thing. i'm like i'm looking at it and i'm like well, shit. Because <laughs> the only thing I've trained him in is bows and I think leadership. Yeah. So I'm like, now I'm like, well, here's an iron sword, buddy. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> Go learn how to use that sword. <laughs> like, use this fucking sword, you goddamn idiot. See, in, uh, in the Black Eagle house, because I've chosen them three times now. Um, yeah. Because A, like with the second playthrough and I played through Edelgard's story, I fucking love Edelgard's story. Yeah. And I like Edelgard as a character because I just like strong female characters. Fucking yeah. sue me. Um, she was cool. Like, of the house leaders, she was the house leader I was most, like, I was like, no, nah, I think I'm going to go with that. Yeah. You know, because I knew that would be a choice yeah. from before I started the game. And then when I found out about, like, the, the you know, the, the, the kingdom she comes from or the yeah. empire. Yeah. And then talked to some of her class, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like them. And Edelgard's a dumb fucking name. <laughs> So I was like, this guy is funny. I'm going with it. Yeah, no, Claude's a cool motherfucker. And like I've already said on my next playthrough, he's yeah. his house. I'm choosing his house. I wish um, you could recruit them. Yeah, that would be that would be really cool. But I think it would also def- it like, kind of fucks up the story. Yeah, it kind of fuck. Which, uh, by the way, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, mm-hmm. When you're going through a story and mm-hmm. you have a recruited character, mm-hmm. um, and you've chosen your school, you've chosen a house. Uh, the the recruited characters will not pop up in any cutscene at all um like oh because you keep you keep them on the new new game plus you mean no like oh you I'm mean after you, you recruit them yeah like 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 for me I, um I on my last playthrough where i played through edelgard story um i recruited one of the uh one of the other students before <laughs> i even started edelgard story like right before i did yeah. it too and um I noticed that as i went through this thing and there were the cut scenes where they were all having their conversations talking about the events kid was nowhere to be found like is he not like a part of this does he not matter 
And what then about the later class? on, I ended up recruiting one of the mages from Yellow Deer, which, yeah. by the way, I talk, that's the one I talked about recruiting last night. Yeah. I went out of my way to recruit her. Um, I sat there and realized the entire thing. She's just not any fucking way. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I guess, okay, that's cool. What about the class stuff? Where when you're doing uh, one of the things that it, it the, the whole classroom stuff is really interesting. Yes, you choose your lecture, you choose what you want the students. Any to focus recruiting on. student that you get, they do pop up there. Okay, they, yeah. so they'll pop up when yes, like yes. the students will come to you and like ask Teach, you questions. We have a about question yes, yeah. about this, like moral questions, like yeah. everything. Uh, there's there's just so much in this game about building up rapport with people. Yeah, like the dialogues, like in between stuff, you have options, like where the students will be like. Uh, one interesting one I noticed just recently, and I love this in this game, yeah. is one of the young students, two students from a different house. Um, it's this short little violent kid, and he's apparently eating, like, wolfing down his food like a goddamn animal. Yes. And he's like, teach, will you t tell the uh, ass face over there that <laughs> you know, eating like this, it's, you know, it's, it's food. I'm just getting it down and fucking, you know, yeah. whatever. And you'd be like, yeah, man, food's for power or something like that. And the kid's like, yeah. And he raises his, um, <laughs> yes, his like yeah. of you. Yeah. You walk over to the other dude who was like, I think the primary reason I didn't choose her house, uh, this fucking like black haired douchebag. Yeah, and Hubert. he's like, I can't believe he's eating so fucking disgracefully. We're nobles here, blah blah blah. And and I was, oh, and he's like, no, what do you Lorenz. think? What do you think? I don't know if he said it like that. Uh, Either way, he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, too, too true. Yes, it's uh, it's uh, so uncouth. And he raised his relationship. It's, it's pretty fantastic. I was like, I, yeah. love, I love dumb shit like that where I can literally walk from one person to the other and just, just two completely them. contradictory answers. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. It's very easy to tell people what they want to hear. Yeah. And you know you're going to get the, the bloop. Yeah. Like the little. Now, I will tell stuff. you um, that it's not always that easy when you have those mm. questions like that. It's yeah. not always that easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, like there are there are going to be events that happen where you like I don't know what to tell this person. Yeah. Like uh, well yeah I've I've noticed those too. I think Claude came up and asked me something like what did he do wrong or in a battle or something and I'm like uh picked one. I mean I didn't get a bonus but he's it's not like he's like oh fuck you and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way would be hilarious. Yeah. That, that would be funny too. Um but uh like I love that though that uh, that yeah you can basically have. Just your characters, you can shape them exactly how you want them to be. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like uh, it's almost like had like playing a game where every one of your characters is an avatar, right? Like you can have. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, because they all he choose what you want them. Yeah, they have their because of their, I guess. Just I mean, their personalities. Do, yeah, they do have some individual weaknesses like and strengths. Yeah, yeah like like. Like for example, uh, in in Edelgard's in the Black Eagle class, um, mm -hmm. you have Hubert. Hubert's her servant, and he's a dark mage primarily, mm -hmm. so he's not good with healing magic. Like that's a weakness for him. He can't he can't learn that as efficiently yeah. as say Linhart, that that character who is a reason and faith kind of guy mm -hmm. who, who who like really leans heavily into black magic and healing magic. Yeah. Or um, later on in the story, you recruit uh, a young woman named Flane, who is Seteth's like younger sister. Younger sister. And if you go around her, he gets so mad. Um, and she's like, a, she's primarily white mage and okay. lance skills, right? Yeah. And so she learns those stuff really easily. Your mm -hmm. character actually learns white magic really fucking easily too. Like yeah. Byleth um, is actually a prodigy in white magic. So when you mm -hmm. go and you receive training for white magic, you can get these stars. Mm -hmm. And when you get three stars, you get a unique skill. And there are other characters who have that yeah. feature on certain skills. And I, I just did that with somebody else where I discovered that they had a, a, a little feature like that on one of those skills. I can't fucking remember who it was or what it was. Yeah. But yeah. One thing I was wondering about, specifically about that, I know I've got a character. I, I think I've got at least <clears throat> one who they actually have a minus to that stat to yes. training yes but it's a it's got the three stars mm -hmm. so i haven't been training them in it because i don't want to fucking it, it, it would not raise up as fast right um but i just kind of was like why why would you have a minus in it 
I don't know. I don't remember why. It could be like a personal thing where they're not yeah. personally interested in that. They don't but want But for some yeah. reason, they have a natural skill in it. Yeah. Like uh, you you kind of encounter that with the young mage that I, I recruited, that I mentioned earlier yeah. about recruiting from the other house, um, where she turns into this really badass mage later on. And that's mm -hmm. what I wanted. I went just because I already knew from facing her in battle that she turns into this little badass little mage. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to recruit her early and shape her myself, make her even more powerful. And um, I sat there and sh I noticed that, like, when you do the uh, the, the dialogues with her where you're mm -hmm. building the rapport and, and getting the relationship built, where she straight says, people always compliment me for this. I don't want to be complimented for this, you know, because it's just, it's mm -hmm. just whatever. I want to be complimented on my hard work. Yeah. And the professor was the only one who had ever done that. Yeah. And so like that, that worked out for her. So it could be something like that where it's like, yeah, that's great that I'm really good at this, but I'm not interested in it. Yeah. I, you know, I want to not working. It's not as hard. Right. Yeah. Cause it's not, it doesn't matter. Kind of cool. So it could be something like that. Cause like, I can't speak to your specific case yet. Cause I've I just wondered it. if it was like a, like why, why would they put that in? Like, was it just to fucking to be a douchebag? But no, I think no, it sounds like they give a, a story reason. Why yeah. The like, characters might not like one thing I've noticed, um, so far, uh, through my, through my three playthroughs, um, is that nothing is arbitrary. Yeah. So far. Like no, I have not noticed anything like that's just, that's just there to annoy you. Mm -hmm. Like there is no mechanic that way. There is no thing that I've found so far. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. The like, game is very, very tight. Like even, yeah, it's even very as far tight. as I've played. Like there's, there's not, there's not a lot of loose ends. Yeah. There's not plot holes. Like the first time I played through, there was a character that I was like, who the fuck is this guy? He pops up and then he never pops up again. And then when I played through the second time and I went the other story route, it's like, I now understand why he never popped up again because he had nothing to do with that other storyline that I played through. Yeah. And that's why I never learned who he was. And then you go through this storyline, it's like, oh, now I know who he was and he's an asshole and I want to kill him. There's uh, there's funny stereotypical stuff. Yes. Like very quickly, one of the first things, one of the first people you can talk to as you're running around is the, um, I, I think he's a combat instructor. Yes. Uh, I can't remember his name. Alois. It's like Alois. Yeah, yeah. He's such a stereotypical douchebag. Bad guy. Which I don't know if he's actually a bad guy. I mean, Alois is not a bad guy. He's he's Maybe it's not. Alois is the green-haired dude? No. No, okay. It's the dude with the mask. He's wearing like a oh. fucking... He's yeah. wearing like a goddamn... I think he had a... Remember? He's just had like a white half hair. white mask face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, he's so I'm going, I, that's unbelievably mild. stereotypical. Very, it's a, it's a spoiler. Yeah, but yes, he is a bad guy. Yeah, no, it's duh. But he gives you dumb quests. Like he gave me a quest to do something where I'm like, oh, maybe he's not a complete asshole. And then he's like, fucking called me a little bitch or something afterwards. I don't remember. Yeah. But like any time you talk to him, he's just like, get out of my face. I'm evil. <laughs> like I was like, yeah, oh, no, like okay. I will, I will show it to you. He's a bad guy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, of course, uh, ultimately, whether he's evil, evil, or Ye not evil, Ye evil, depends on the he's choices. He's a mask-wearing anime character. Yes. Evil, quote-unquote evil. Yeah. Like um, the fucker in I think he's always bad. Gundam he's Wayne. always a bad guy. Yeah. Right? Um, depending on whether or not he's on your side or not, no, it's yeah. all depending on the choices you make. God, and, I um, was like, as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, uh there's a couple of characters that are like that. Yeah. Like you don't even suspect at first. And then you're like, that motherfucker, all the signs were there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did I not know? It's, <laughs> I mean, and it's the same thing with like, like with the able guard storyline that now that I've played through it, it's like, I'm seeing things like that fucking makes sense. Why yeah. did I not see that before? You guys are fucking brilliant. I love you <laughs> because they, they set this shit up and they give you the hints and you completely fucking miss them. Unless yeah. you're one of those people who dive so deeply into this shit that you're just <laughs> whatever. Uh, I mean, there's very clearly early on, like it's, there's characters that wear their shit on their sleeve, their yeah. opinions of things. Yeah. Um, pretty quickly that I was like, Oh, if the story goes this way, I know where you're falling. Like it's like, it's like, it's like, thing. It's like you know, like with the Edelgard storyline, mm -hmm. she speaks 
very clearly about her intentions to rule. Yeah. She speaks very clearly. So when I say what I'm about to say, this isn't really a spoiler if you're paying attention to the things she says. She turns against the church, blah, 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 takes over as the empire and does shit. Yeah. Like, that's not really a spoiler. That is the point of her entire story arc. But that's not really a spoiler because she she gives she telegraphs these hints to you. Like, when I say she it's telegraphs, funny. she's like, she asks things, she says things, she, she clearly states her intentions. So it's like, yeah, that's going to happen, you know, like. And then when it happens, you're like, yes. I, like, I, I don't know if the storyline, I'm sure his single storyline is different. The uh, other class, the um, lions. Yeah. Uh, the dude, when something happens where a random lord rebels against the church, he's like, I can't, if I was only just, a, old just age stops me from being king. If I was a little, a little bit older, I could stop, like, I could be king and blah, blah. And it's like, he like rants for a second in the dialogue. And I was like, oh, okay. And everyone... Before you even get to choosing, people tell you like, oh, yes, he's a brilliant blah, blah, blah. And he on the outside, he's very noble. and blah. He's got a dark inside. Watch out for him. <laughs> and like every character, they do this. Yeah. Almost every character. Your father character, as soon as you go to the church, he's seriously like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're going to be a professor. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's great. Watch out for everyone around here. Don't trust anyone. Watch out and for I'm me. like, holy shit. And he specifically mentions and watch the out for the archbishop. Yeah, he She's specifically fucking... mentions the archbishop. Yeah. She's like, Huh. It's already, I'm like, huh, but she's, you know, pretty nice lady. Get to that point where this dude's apparently rebelling. She's like, we will teach them why you don't go against the church. And I'm like, oh, okay. Fucking, uh, pa uh, Darth Palpatine. <laughs> and I can, um, I can definitely say, uh, depending on the storyline you go through, she's either the nicest lady ever or the most psychotic fucking bitch yes. you've ever met. I oh love it. my God. Very, very clearly some of the stuff with these characters is there, which is why I was like, this is, this is good. I like this. There's so many, there's so many plot twists that I want to sit here and talk about and reveal. And I was like, I can't because yeah, I don't want to spoil far. things, <laughs> but it's like, oh my God. And, uh, like, everybody, like, like through the storylines I've experienced, uh, depending on the path you go, um, everyone goes a little crazy yeah. in, in, in their own way. Um, but the Archbishop goes off the fucking deep end. Mm -hmm. So, so, so much harder. The, um, the intro cinematic to this game, and I'm sure it'll come up and explain things, because at the, at the point where it happened... You don't know any of these characters. No. Is this giant war, and she's fighting this guy who's like a warlord on the well, other side. Well, what you see is you're seeing Saros fighting. Ser this Saros. Oh, that wasn't. The oh, Church was of the Saros, goddess? right? Yeah, that is Saros. That is St. Saros. That is oh. not. Oh, I thought okay, it was listen, the Archbishop. Okay, listen, I can't, I can't, I can't okay, talk either too way, much about it this. It is a chick with green well, hair I can that tell looks you, similar. That's Saros, right? Okay. That is Saros. Like, they make that pretty clear if you... Eventually, they will. Yeah, like, Whatever. well, not, not even eventually. Like, if you're paying attention, that is the war that they talk about later they, in the game. They haven't talked about the war yet. They, I know there's a war that happened in the Red Canyon, but I'm at the point now where they're like, why is this Cam Canyon's name red? Yeah. And your character's like, I feel familiar. It's like, I, all the signs yeah. are there, so I get it. But I just thought it was cool that it, she's definitely similar looking to the fucking. Uh, the priestess. Yeah. And the Archbishop. This bitch, like, in the... She's fighting this dude and then proceeds to just fucking stab just the shit out of him. the shit out like, of him. Like, crazy. God. Like, 16 times. Yeah. She, she's, like, she's performing, like, an like an extra miracle, ex like, ex execution. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was... I was like, oh, that bitch is hardcore. That bitch is hardcore. But, yeah, it's uh, it's a fun, fantastic game. I mean, oh, I, I, I love it. Like, it's yeah. one of those things, like... Like, it's one of those games that's so good, I'm playing through a storyline the second time just because I want to experience it again. They found a way, and, and it's cool that they found a way to take Fire Emblem and take it into a new direction while keeping, you know, Fire Emblem. Yeah. Keeping it's still, the tactics, the combat. It's still very much Fire Emblem. Yeah. And they, they, they fix it so that your choices matter more, like you mm -hmm. said. And that the, the, there's the other point, like the story actually is important this time. Yeah. It's not like, like of all the Fire Emblem games I've played, and admittedly I've not played as many as, as a lot of people out there, but I have played a lot of Fire Emblem games. Mm -hmm. This definitely has the best and most in-depth story. I can't really tell you anything about the stories of any Fire Emblem games other than like the every first single one. one. GBA. 
every single I can tell one, you about that one. Every single one, uh, a kingdom is attacked. Everybody has to run away, or someone already ran away and was hidden, and they're really important. In the yeah. case of the first one, and they're very and powerful. then and then there's a war that happens, yeah. and they have to defeat an evil mage and usually a dragon. Yes, every single fire every emblem single game fire I've emblem, ever played I, through to completion, there's a dragon at the end. Yeah, the the story of getting there is just bad kingdom attacks good kingdom. Oh wait, bad kingdom might not actually be all that bad. Good kingdom might not be very good, but ultimately it doesn't fucking matter because you will forget the names halfway through anyway. Pretty much. <laughs> and yeah. just go, okay, click next. Okay, next battle starts. Yes. Find the characters ha that have names because I need to figure out who to talk to them to recruit that character. I am so glad that's not it. Yes. Yeah, like where you have to, get, like that one map in the original Fire Emblem where you have to get Lin all the way up to mm -hmm. the other end of the fucking map in like three turns otherwise the character goes away unless otherwise the character's like you know what fuck this i'm out in yeah. pieces or the the map where somebody goes through and robs every chest and then if you don't get to him before he leaves all the chests are gone and you can't recruit the character yeah like oh well fuck you too all right guys yeah um, think, so go play fire emblem yeah. three houses if you got a switch if you don't buy a switch um, and play it ultimately though it's a zero out of ten game you can't pet the cats or the dogs. Yeah, what's up with that, Zero man? out of ten. Come on. Come on, yeah. guys. God Why would you not it. let me pet the cats and dogs? You they're have fucking, cats, you have dogs. They're all they're over the fucking place. They're everywhere, and you can't pet any of them. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Worst game ever. IGN, worst game ever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go play the game. It's fucking yeah. fantastic. Um, like, it's it's probably my favorite Fire Emblem game ever, and, you know, that, that says a lot. Because I... I Dude, it's just fantastic. Every part of it is engaging and engrossing, and I want to keep playing it. It was fun. Yeah. So go play it. All right, guys. Uh, only other thing I'll mention real quick is I saw uh, Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. Shaw. Yes. Um, and I, I, again, I don't want to talk about it too much, spoilers and whatnot, but f I haven't seen the last two Fast and Furious movies, so I haven't even seen the movie where Jason Statham is the villain or when he is on their side, but this movie is so fucking good. It was hilarious. If just go grab like a big bucket of popcorn and sit there and shove popcorn and pop in your face for an hour and 45 minutes or however long the movie is. And it is funny and the action scenes are fucking great. It's everything like when we talked about the trailer and how extreme it is, the movie totally lives up to that. It is so stupidly over the top awesome. Um, it's, it's just, it's fun. It's just a fun fucking ride. I'm so happy. And I think the movie's going to do great. Um, I think they're going to build another... This is a rumor, I guess, now, or maybe it's more than a rumor. Yeah. I think they're going to build a either a second Fast and the Furious team or maybe even replace the old team because there are two characters that show up in this movie, two actors, really, that are not in any of the trailers um, that immediately... like They're huge actors, and they make a big fucking part in this movie, and it's funny as hell. And I loved the way they show up. Yeah. Um, one of them isn't like a big surprise. Like he 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 he, it's, he shows up and plays himself that he does in every movie. And then the other person does come out of nowhere. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, that's and I knew they were in it too. Someone told me. Yeah. Beforehand, because um, I mean, if you go on IMDb, you can see the cast list. Of course. It's not a huge spoiler, but. It's not something they talked about, yeah. so I had forgotten. And when this person shows up, when they did, I was like, oh, oh, shit. It's just, it's a great fucking action movie. The Rock beats the ever-living shit out of people. Jason Statham it does awesome Jason Statham action. Um, Idris Elba is such a good fucking villain. I loved, like... He's he's black Superman. He's such a fucking beast in yeah, this movie. He really is black Superman. <laughs> yeah, he's such a fucking beast. I will say though, the end when they finally like like finally they're beating him. Yeah, and like their whole their their excuse for how they start getting the like um the upper hand. Yeah, the upper hand was just so dumb, and then like the fact that he's. It was just, it was dumb, but it was like, I don't care. This is an awesome fight scene with slow motion punching in the rain of three big, big large men. And it was cool. All right. Well, you guys it's heard it there. Go movie. see Hobbs and Shell. Go play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. Um, you know, avoid Ohio. You know, it sucks. <laughs>
and uh, you know, have a good day. Yeah. Um, if you guys liked our word vomit here, you know, make sure you like, subscribe, share, give us money on Patreon, all that good <laughs> stuff. You can help us out if you want. Um, but for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See you. Fuck you. <laughs>